So let me ask you a question. If you were going to recommend a Linux distribution for a brand new user, somebody who was looking to get out of Windows or Mac OS, and you had to present them with one option to try on their laptop or their desktop at home for the very first time, what would you pick? Chances are most of us would probably recommend something like either Linux Mint or Zorin OS as a place to start. This is the start for many people's Linux journeys. And if you are one of those people, then stick around because this video might be helpful for you. Now, if you're someone like myself who's been running Linux for a long time, there's still something that I have to appreciate from projects like this. Full transparency, I still use Linux Mint, as you can see here, as the system that I run my, my channel from. I love Linux Mint, it's a great project. So what I'm gonna aim to do today is two things. First of all, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the final version of Zorin OS 17. Now I'm using the pro version because the team at Zorin are kind enough to provide a copy for press purposes. Um, but at the same time, the core version, much of what I'm going to say applies to the core version that is available for free from Zorin's website as the time of this video is going live. Uh, but I'm also gonna, secondly, compare it a little bit and try to score it a little bit against Linux Mint, because I think as a beginner friendly distribution that helps ease the transition over from Mac OS or Windows into the Linux world, both of these are prime examples of how to do that really well. So let's jump in and we'll have a look. Now the key question that we have to answer today is which one does it better? And I'd love to be able to answer this definitively. We'll see where it lands. I have my suspicions, but let's talk it through. Okay, so first of all, the installation process for both of these distributions is going to be basically identical. They both use the same uh, Ubiquiti installer. They are both based on Ubuntu 22.04, which is worth mentioning because Ubuntu 22.04 is well over 18 months old at this point, And the new LTS release is just around the corner. Now, now, when it comes to the life cycles of these distributions, Zorin OS 16 came out uh, after the release of Ubuntu 20.04, and it had three kind of service pack updates to try and keep it more up to date in terms of the kernel and the graphics drivers that were available. On the other hand, Mint develops their release relatively in cadence with the LTS release. So while Zorin OS 17 is coming out a little over 18 months since the Ubuntu 22.04 LTS. Mint came out with their Mint 21 release pretty shortly after the release of Ubuntu. So this means that development wise, Linux Mint is further down the road than Zorin is, generally speaking. However, as you may have watched in my uh, Zorin OS 17 first impressions video, there's a bit more going on than just that. So all I'm gonna say is that the installation process and the compatibility that you get from the kernel, from drivers and from hardware are all pretty similar between these two. When it comes to the user's first impressions, that's when things diverge a little bit. So what I'm gonna say is that the first impression that you get with Zorin OS is that it is far more uh, polished and modern, I use that loosely, uh, than its Mint counterpart. I mean, just have a look at the difference here between the way this desktop looks versus the way that the desktop looks, even though I've dressed it up a little bit on Linux Mint, right? So there's the menu, the quick actions, the uh, cascading menus out to the side, uh, the toolbar, the system tray, quick launch icons on the taskbar, all of that looks fairly standard. When you open up things like the file browser, you get a little bit more uh, granular detail with symbolic icons and that kind of thing. The density of the overall interface is a little bit tighter. When you go on Zorin, you're gonna notice that uh, the symbolic icons, everything is a little bit more spaced out. There is a, uh, there's a lot more white space and padding around things, a lot smoother rounded edges, uh, all of that kind of thing. Now, most of that is due to Zorin leaning more heavily on the GNOME desktop underneath. So while Zorin OS uses the GNOME Shell uh, 40 series from Ubuntu, uh, it does do a lot of work to customize it and make it its own. It's called it a spatial desktop. And I mean, you and I like marketing speak as much as the next guy, but in terms of being able to describe how this desktop works, it's very similar to what GNOME does. The difference is, is that if you enable certain settings in the uh, Zorin appearance app and you go down to the interface, 
if you want to, uh, or if you go down to the effects rather, if you want to enable the desktop cube and have a, uh, a more obvious sort of s distinction between some of your uh, windows and you want to have a bit of a cube layout depending on how many virtual desktops you have, then you can do that. And, uh, and it's quite a smooth, fluid process. Uh, it also, because of the fact this distribution uh, defaults to the Wayland display server, you get a really nice fluid animation uh, if you're on decent enough hardware. One-to-one uh, -one gesture tracking with the trackpad is here on Zorin compared to on Linux Mint where the gestures are registered uh, on Xorg and it's basically just through a keyboard binding to that particular gesture swipe. So it's not quite one-to-one, -one, um, but it's still nice to have both of these having gestures out of the box. It's something that Mac OS users especially and Windows users I'm finding more recent um, versions of Windows are actually pretty friendly when it comes to gestures. So having those on board is nice. However, I would say that overall, the first impression that you get from using a distribution like Zorin OS 17, the overall UI and UX is more polished. Now, the trade-off here comes with a lack of power features and those that want to drill in and use uh, their computer, you know, with a fair bit of, um, efficiency might find the, the the padding and the extra rounded edges and all that kind of stuff a little bit superfluous and that's fair enough. So while the installation category is going to be a tie, the first impressions category is going to go to Zorin. Now for the rest of this video, I'm actually going to flick off the default uh, theming because in my opinion the default theming in the light mode is too bright uh, especially in a dark environment this is blinding what I like to do is go to the dark mode and switch it to the sort of this gray graphite um, accent color change the background to something that's also relatively dark and you have a pretty suave desktop in my humble opinion all right so let's talk about then uh, apart from the uh, the overall user interface environment what else is going on here because of the fact these two are based on the same Ubuntu base, it can feel a little bit redundant to talk about performance. However, I would honestly put forward that the performance that I'm seeing on Zorin OS 17, both in the core and in the pro version, are remarkable for what it is. Bear in mind that this is a fully fledged, uh, full fat distribution. Uh, the pro version weighs in at six point something gigs for the size of the ISO because of all the pre-installed software that comes with it. The core version is a little lighter at I think it's like three point something gig, but nevertheless, these are heavy distributions. And yet at a cold boot, the amount of times that I've actually managed to boot up at uh, less than one gigabyte of RAM being used is pretty remarkable. Uh, on most versions of modern, of modern Ubuntu and even Linux Mint, I'm lucky if I can get a cold boot under like one and a half gigs or one point around 1.2 is what is what I would uh, is what I would average on a good day. Uh, whereas for some reason, Zorin's been able to uh, optimize their OS to the point where it will usually launch, in my experience, with around 110 to 120 ish tasks running in the background or processes and around uh, around 900 and something megs of RAM. So uh, the release notes for Zorin actually make a point of saying that they've tried to get the system requirements under two gigabytes of RAM as a requirement, uh, which for the kind of modern desktop that we're running with here uh, is pretty remarkable. And the overall responsiveness of this, of this distro has also been pretty noticeable. Uh, and when you take into account some of the improvements that have been made with some of the stuff that I mentioned in my last video uh, about the, um, for example, the, the search to launch. So if you want to, uh, you know, quickly access a particular system settings or something like that, you can do so straight through the menu here like you can on Windows. Uh, it leads to an overall really snappy experience. Now, Linux Mint is no slouch either. And I would say that because of the fact Mint errs on the side of uh, sort of Spartan functionality as opposed to flash and polish, uh, it means that you're gonna have a pretty responsive experience on both of these. What I would say though, is that if you like a desktop that is both responsive, but also feels fun to use, like fluid and, and um, cool animations and that kind of stuff without taxing your system, uh, Zorin is looking really good at this point. 
Okay, so right now, just to recap where we've been, the installation is a bit of a tie. First impressions go to Zorin. The desktop environment overall is going to depend on who you are. For me personally, I'm gonna give the desktop environment score to Linux Mint, because at the end of the day, the environment in my experience is better suited to customization and efficiency. That's what matters to me. But for many people, the, uh, the fluidity, the friendliness, and the polish that is in the GNOME based Zorin desktop is going to be more preferable. While I don't have time to go into gaming performance on any great detail, A, because I'm not a huge gamer and B, because of the fact that I just don't have the system set up for that uh, yet. What I would say is that the gaming performance on Zorin OS is, in my experience, been slightly better. There's something about what Zorin is doing on the back end with their driver management that is very impressive to me. I don't know, and again, we're not talking factors of magnitude here. We're just saying that they are doing something with uh, the how they package their drivers and how they integrate in with the kernel and the rest of it that uh, seems to be a little more optimized than what Linux Mint is. Now, at the end of the day, neither of these distributions are built from the ground up for gaming, uh, but it is just worth mentioning. I think Zorin has a slight performance advantage, at just at least in my own very superficial testing. Now, when it comes to app selection and app installation, uh, I'm gonna have to give the points here to, uh, to Zorin in the app installation market, purely for the reason that somehow they've managed to have a really polished GNOME Software Center based on the very latest version of GNOME Software. It's from 45.2, and they've managed to integrate the backends for Flatpak, Snap, App Images, and Debs, and they have support that is readily available for Windows applications. Now, what this means is that no matter what package you throw at this distribution, it can handle it. And the other nice thing about it is due to how old the Zorin OS base is, having up-to-date software is incredibly important. So the fact that all of these updates get managed through the one software manager, and I would say this one looks and feels a lot nicer to use than the one that comes on Mint, leads to this being very compelling for brand new users. Again, somebody that wants a little more granular detail is going to appreciate the extra, I guess, customization and features that come with Linux Mint's software manager and with Linux Mint's update manager. But the tools that Zorin uses are really consumer friendly. It's very hard to get this kind of stuff wrong. The only point that I would knock it for is the fact that Mint has a built-in system snapshot tool that prevents anything from going tragically wrong. If an update did book your system, you could roll back. Uh, that functionality is not here in Zorin that I'm aware of. But when it comes to built-in Windows app support, again, this is always gonna be a bit of a testy subject, but I've downloaded the Epic installer for running Fortnite or something like that. If you double click on a .msi file or a commonly installed .exe file from the internet, if you were a new user and you're wanting to download and install a piece of software. What I like about Zorin is that it actually gives a recommendation here saying that the heroic games launcher can be installed from software and that it's an alternative to the Epic Game Store. And then it says that the Epic installer is an unknown Windows app, you're gonna to need to download an extra support layer in order to install this and it may not be fully compatible. So then the highlighted option is to install the alternative. This sort of thing is gold for a new user. And so when you come into the, uh, when you click on that link, it takes you straight to the software store and you can download and install the Heroic Games Launcher, which functionally does what the Epic Games Launcher does. Uh, that kind of polish is really, really underrated in a project like Zorin because at the end of the day, we all wanna find alternatives to the software that we want most. So common stuff like Adobe or uh, you know Photoshop, Microsoft Office, all those sort of things will point to the alternatives in the software store, uh, which again, I think gives software management a bit of a leg up over Mint's decently functional, but overall fairly aged looking software manager. The only knock I would say is that we don't have readily accessible app ratings uh, on the GNOME software, but that's neither here nor there in terms of a new user. Again, the amount of packaging that Zorin does in the background for things like uh, Proton, for Lutris, for Windows compatibility in general, is more polished and curated than what you're gonna find on Mint. 
So the app, in, app selection and integration, I'm definitely gonna have to hand to Zorin, uh, but when it comes to integrating with your hardware, uh, things like integrating with a smartphone or um, being able to sync up your online accounts and your digital life in general, um, both of these are fairly suitable in that they both use the same backend tools to get you connected to, the, uh, to either your phone or to your online accounts. So uh, on Zorin, these tools are built in. So you have the online accounts built into GNOME that you can access. Uh, and then that will connect in your email and calendar to the Evolution uh, email client that's built in here. On Mint, you get the Thunderbird email suite, which you have to set up separately from the GNOME settings. Uh, but when it comes to smartphones, you have Zorin Connect for Zorin OS, which is basically just a branded version of uh, GS Connect or KDE Connect. And that will synchronize with your smartphone quite nicely. They even give some recommendations for how you can do that with, uh, with iOS now that KDE Connect is available on iOS. Um, so you can actually use Zorin Connect with an iPhone if you so desire. Uh, that kind of stuff doesn't come out of the box on Mint, but you can definitely install it relatively easily. So again, it's a bit of a draw here in my opinion, depending on what you want out of your system. Um, but I would probably give a slight edge to Zorin in this case, just for the fact they have smartphone connectivity available out of the box, should you so desire. Finally, let's talk about quality of life improvements and we'll wrap this up. What I've got to say fundamentally is the same that I said at the outset. This distribution is based on a very old quote unquote, Ubuntu base. It is going to have quality of life improvements and service pack updates into the coming years. But the fact that it's already starting this far behind is a concern for longevity's sake, mostly as it pertains to hardware and hardware compatibility with the kernel. I think about some of the new stuff that's coming out from Intel um, and how will that work with existing Linux kernels, especially ones that need to, that are LTS releases. Uh, I don't know, but as it pertains to most users, uh, I think you should be fine on Zorin um, for the foreseeable future. And there are quite a few people still running um, Zorin OS 16, which is based on a kernel and a hardware enablement stack that's from 2020, which is pretty impressive. Uh, so there is a lot more going on with quality of life updates that the Zorin team put into their packaging uh, than Linux Mint tends to uh, slingshot off the success of Ubuntu and is pretty closely in step behind them in terms of uh, what kind of hardware they can enable through the kernel and drivers and other things. Having said that, if you care about having uh, the more up-to-date uh, features and having more configuration, customization and control over your system, then Linux Mint is going to appeal to you overall as a project. However, if you want curation and you want polish, then Zorin OS is gonna be the way to go. What I would say is that the wow factor is definitely present with Zorin. None of that's changed. And if you're, if you're encountering Zorin for the very first time and you're deciding which distro to start off with, then Zorin is gonna be a great bet for you. The funny thing is though, is that for me personally, as I've gotten on, and foodled around with most open source projects over more than a decade, I actually come to appreciate curation more and more. For now, I'll be staying with Linux Mint, but if I had to pick between which of these projects I'd recommend for a brand new user, it would be Zorin, because while the things I care about might be better served in Linux Mint, the stuff that most average users care about, an up-to-date browser, a polished user interface that makes sense, uh, wide software and hardware compatibility is all here on Zorin. Let me know if you'd like a deep dive into what Zorin OS Pro offers versus the core, but you can go and find both of them at their website. Go and check out Linux Mint at Linux Mint's website and just give them both a trial, even in their live USB form. And, uh, and you're not gonna be disappointed with either. Whether you're running Zorin OS 17, the brand new release that'll be out now as a this video or whether you're running uh, Linux Mint 21.3, which is uh, due out any day now as well. Uh, look, it's a great time to be a Linux user and to start looking around at alternatives. So subscribe if you're new. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.